You spot them on the streets of the city, the malls and parks of the suburbs. Sometimes they band together. Mostly they walk alone. Bodybuilders. You know the kind. They strut like no others, holding their elbows wider than their shoulders, legs far apart. I know. I was one of them. And so begins Samuel Fussell's Stranger Than Fiction detour into the world of bodybuilding. Muscle was a vicarious submersion into the lesser known world of 80s bodybuilding and the Southern California gym scene. Through Fussell's memoir, readers are given a glimpse of the 80s gym culture, including the use of performance enhancing drugs, training methods, fashion trends, and dietary regimens. Additionally, the book offers an in depth look into one man's relentless pursuit of physical perfection. Fussell's journey from a skinny 6 foot 4, 170 pound bookworm to a 258 pound Arnold wannabe is an epic tale of obsession with the iron. He delves into a world filled with restrictive diets, steroids, and grueling, vomit inducing workouts. Fussell's origin story is a familiar one a weak and sickly youth heeding the call of the iron as a way out of the plaguing despair of his existence. The mean streets of a 70s and 80s New York drove Sam to a state of chronic anxiety and hypochondria. Yearning to escape the confines of his urban dissonance, Fussell explains, I felt trapped by the teeming populace, dwarfed by skyscrapers, suffocated by the fumes from factories and expressways. A combat soldier had a better chance of surviving World War II than a New Yorker surviving New York. One day he flees the approaches of a crowbar wielding menace, seeking refuge in the safe confines of a bookstore. Amidst the fear and turmoil, he stumbles on a solution to his angst and an answer to his prayers. A copy of Arnold Schwarzenegger's The Education of a Bodybuilder. The sight of Arnold on the cover exuding power, control and invincibility became a potent symbol for Fussell's own personal transformation. Through this muscular representation of safety and security, Fussell discovers the princely figure he aspires to be. The Austrian Oaks great chunks of tanned, taut muscle seem to Sam the equivalent of modern day armour, the human fortress Fussell desires to emulate. The muscular physique of Arnold symbolises an impenetrable defence, providing protection from all of life's adversities. Determined to put his plan into action, Fussell meticulously scours the book diligently researching his plan of attack. Taking the bold first step, Fussell joins the local Y and tentatively creeps into his first weight room. Fussell's first foray into the world of bodybuilding was a far cry from the iron solidarity and camaraderie he'd envisioned based on his readings from Arnold's book. His first visit to the Y gym as a scene straight out of Dante's Inferno, a sauna-like atmosphere with savage screams piercing the air. Surrounded by bars on the windows, intimidating equipment and a graveyard of dumbbells, Fussell is first assaulted by a double amputee, and then publicly humiliated by a chorus of hostile gym goers chanting, New meat, new meat. Despite this harsh initiation, none of it dissuades Sam and his tenacious efforts soon earn him the respect of the more experienced lifters in the gym. Taking him under their wing, they advise Fussell in straightforward bro talk when he shows them the sketched image of his envisioned final form on a napkin. You want to look like that? Sweet Pea asks, incredulous. Then you best be prepared to make the necessary adjustments. First off, you would have to start eating five meals a day plus special protein milkshakes. Then you would have to adopt the double split three on one off exercise program. It meant 12 workouts per week instead of three. But above all, they said, it meant the three Ds. Dedication, determination, discipline. That's bodybuilding. Sure enough, Fussell becomes ensnared in the magic of bodybuilding's quickly won newbie gains, and muscle growth becomes his sole preoccupation to the exclusion of everything else. Within 18 months, Fussell expands from an emaciated 170 to a respectable 220 pounds. Embracing the culture of his newfound tribe, Fussell discovers the walk, that signature strut of novice bodybuilders everywhere. With flared lats and a confidence fueled swagger, he abandons his job to focus solely on his ultimate goal, bulking up 
and making gains. Seeking out new and sophisticated workout methods such as pyramiding, forced reps and supersetting, Fussell's drive and intensity eventually eclipse his fellow gym rats. When his progress inevitably stalls and he reaches the dreaded plateau, Fussell decides on drastic action. Despite the scorn ridiculed and horrified embarrassment of friends and family, Fussell quits not only his job, but also his former life, making the pilgrimage to the epicenter of bodybuilding in Southern California. Shedding intellectual ambition for iron and Oxford button downs for tank tops and posing trunks, Fussell's metamorphosis is crystallized in his all out resolve to expedite the growth process, defying both nature and nurture. As his iron world eclipses any semblance of sound judgment, Fussell engages in a Faustian bargain. By his second day in California, he begins taking steroids with the simple rationalization, I was desperate. If who you are is what you do, and as a bodybuilder, what you do is what you look like, then in California I was distinctly in trouble because I didn't look like a bodybuilder. And as long as I didn't look like a builder, I wasn't comfortable with myself. Tom Platts was quoted as saying he first took steroids because in competitions you get tired of finishing second. I was concerned far less with competition than with self-identity. I felt like a fraud. I needed the juice in the worst way to make myself whole. I needed to complete the new persona to make myself into a bodybuilder. Fueled by a cocktail of steroids, he soars to new heights in muscle mass and strength, gaining 15 pounds on his first cycle of 8 Anovar pills a day, twice weekly testosterone and DECA injections. And in 6 months, Fussell sees his bench improve from 315 to 405, and his squat from 405 to 545. As Fussell's physique undergoes a dramatic transformation, so does his outlook on life. His newly chiseled frame provides him a reshaped perspective on the world and his place within it, a view that is not always positive. As Fussell states, I longed for that conviction, the ease and peace of mind that would come from the simplistic belief that there's black and white, good and evil, positive and negative, big and small. I retreated into a narrow world of dichotomy. I no longer had questions, only solutions, and they all pointed to the weight room. I didn't have to think, I didn't have to care, I didn't have to feel, I simply had to lift. Chemically enhanced bodybuilding became Fussell's escape from the limitations of the human experience. With obsessive control, he uses the iron as a rite of passage to distance himself from his perceived weakness and vulnerabilities. I hated the flawed, weak, vulnerable nature of being human as much as I hated the Adam's apple which bobbed beneath my chin. The attempt at physical perfection grew from my seeds of self-disgust. The projection of this accumulated self-loathing was soon transmuted into a form of palpable misanthropy. I was fueled by my own anger, which I seemed to draw from in an inexhaustible source. I watched almost as a spectator as my body operated beyond my control. I wasn't just aching for a fist fight, I was begging for it. I longed for the release. I strutted through the city streets, a juggernaut in a do-rag, glaring and menacing anyone who dared meet my eye. With a newfound sense of security giving way to a need to dominate, Fussell's journey towards building a physical fortress of muscle was no longer driven by fear, but instead a desire for self-obliteration. This shell that I created wasn't meant just to keep people at bay. No, this carapace was laboriously constructed to keep things inside too. The physical palisades and escarpments of my own body served as a rocky boundary that permitted no passage, no hint of a deeper self, a self I couldn't bear. Driven by his demons and consumed by a single-minded determination, Fussell's retreat to the weight room became a retreat into the simpler world of numbers. Numerical gradations were the only thing left in my life that made sense. 20 was better than 17, but worse than 22. 
bench pressing 315 was better than bench pressing 275, but worse than 365. I was reduced to a world where such thinking ruled. By May of 1988, Fussell weighed 257 pounds. His neck measured 19 inches, wider, he notes, than his head. His arms, 18 inches cold. He had a 52-inch chest, a 36-inch waist, and 29-inch thighs. Thanks for watching part one of my analysis of Muscle, Confessions of an Unlikely Bodybuilder. Drop your thoughts about the book, characters, and anything to do with 80s bodybuilding in the comments below. And please subscribe for part two's Deeper Dive, and stay updated for weekly news, truths, and reviews. Thanks again.